This ain't a marina. I already have enough boat anchors. What? This is Honda Generator. These are the best generators ever made. I need you to look at it. All right, I'm looking at it right now. Now get it out of here. I already wrote down what's wrong with it right here on top of the gas tank. All right, I'll take a look at it, but I can almost guarantee whatever's wrong with it, the part's probably not available anymore to fix it. Okay, well, maybe I can watch you work on it so next time I know what to do so I can just fix it myself. Sure, you can hang around and, and go through the process on how I troubleshoot this generator. Oh, great, that would be awesome. You probably won't remember any of it, but I'll show you anyway. <laughs> what was that sound that came out of you? That's how I laugh. Can I get a bottle of water? Pterodactyl here. Today's video is gonna be on Honda generators and why I think they're junk. And a lot of you hopefully will agree. And the ones that don't agree probably have a running Honda generator that hasn't experienced a problem with it yet. But when you do, you're gonna be in for a big surprise. Your brain is gonna <laughs> explode. So this Honda 3000C Cyclo Inverter Generator, which is an inverter generator, came in from a construction company and someone had wrote on there, other than Uncle Andy, what was wrong with it. Burnt stator, bad GFCI relay, and of course, none of that is what's wrong with this generator. So whoever wrote that on there, wherever they took it, probably took it to a Honda dealer because I've been running into this a lot where customers are taking stuff back to dealers with their so-called factory trained technicians and then the thing ends up here and then I tell a whole different story. So we're gonna throw this thing up on the bench and we're gonna go through the test procedure and I'm gonna show you what's wrong with this generator and why it can't be fixed. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start the generator and I'm gonna show you what it's doing, what the problem is, so you know, in case yours is doing this too. And we choke it. Mr. Cameraman, I want you to focus right on this area here. So we know it's, it's putting out electricity because the green light came on and then the oil alert came on immediately. So I have what's called a generator, Honda generator troubleshooting manual. Now you may want to get one of these if you're doing a lot of generators. Andy, oh, what are you doing? Are you paying attention? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. So I already got this model generator brought up in the in the manual here. And what we have is the EB3000C. I thought it was a cyclone. Honda cyclone, right? Yeah, cyclone converter. Oh, cyclone. I thought it was a cyclone. No. All right, does the engine start? It does in a way, but it doesn't stay running. So we're gonna focus on this section here. Does the engine start? We're gonna say no, because it does start and it dies. With the engine switch on, pull the recoil starter and observe the oil alert light. Ours isn't really flashing, but it's on. Check the engine oil level, add oil if necessary, full recoil starter and observe the oil alert light to see if it flashes. It does flash. It, it comes on and it shuts off right away. Disconnect the oil level bullet switch connector and observe the oil light as you pull the recoil starter rope again. So we're gonna disconnect this yellow wire here. because you can see the wire goes into the engine block and that's where the oil alert switch is. So we're gonna disconnect it and we're gonna try to start it again and see what happens. Again, you're gonna focus on here. All right, I'll 
output comes on, still goes out. Go to next page. Not next column, next page. So we turn the page. They want you to check the engine RPM, standard low. Well, it won't run long enough to check any of that. Remove the cyclo converter cover, which I have already done. And they want us to remove the double red, double blue, double white, double black wires from the converter. Disconnect the orange and gray wire two pin connector from the cyclo converter. Are you catching any of this? Yeah, I thought you wanted to work. I didn't know you needed this flashlight on there to see. No, just listen to what I'm doing and quit messing with my stuff. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Daryl. Are you mad at me? Now, I already know that this is going to test good, but we're going to test it anyway. And the reason I know it's going to test good is because the output indicator light's coming on. But if you want, we can go through those test procedures, which is disconnecting this double red, double white, double blue, this double black wire down here, and the orange and gray from here. And then you take your voltmeter, if you got a voltmeter, and you check from the red to the black wire, and you should have 74 volts AC, plus or minus 12 volts. So if you got, say, 67 volts, you're within that plus or minus 12 volts. And then they want you to test the orange and gray. So you would, you know, stick each end of the wire from your... Uh, meter, one on the orange, one on the gray, and then you're going to check and see if you got 12 volts. So we'll just go ahead and we're not going to do all of them, but we'll just do like one. Just to show you that that part is good, because I already know that, because the green indicator light came on. And if you're scared about which wire goes where, if you got Mr. Paint Pen, you could mark the backs of where the wires went, so that way you put them back in the same spot. There's no yellow, Andy. Oh, I thought you said there was a yellow wire. No. Oh, okay. Put that away. So that way when you go to reconnect it, you know which color went where. So then we'll disconnect this. We'll disconnect the white. I, I already marked them, Andy. Oh, okay, sorry. You're supposed to be learning. I am learning. You're like a child. <laughs> With a creepy laugh. You got any chippos? Yeah, I do. Why don't you go get some chippos? And leave me alone. I will in a little bit. So kind of fan these out. So these are the wires that are coming from the stator. And let's disconnect this. The orange and gray. Now. The generator is going to start now and it's going to stay running because I've got this all disconnected from the inverter. That tells me this inverter is bad because I'm going to, I'm going to go through and test all this like they show in here and it's going to be within the specs that's in here. Because it says here one or more winding tests low or no output Stator winding is faulty, replace the stator. If you look up the price of the stator for this generator, if it's even available, you're not gonna pay to have this generator fixed. Oh. It's gonna cost too much. Oh. All right, so we're gonna go to the column that's gonna say, okay, everything tests okay. Then they're gonna want you to check the continuity between the generator connectors and the receptacles. And that's the receptacles. So you're gonna check for continuity just to make sure that the wires, which would be 
This red wire and this white wire, these are the wires that go to the receptacles. You're going to check continuity to make sure that there's juice getting to them. You're going to find out, yeah, there's juice getting to them. And then it's going to say, if all that tests okay, replace the cyclo converter. And then you're going to proceed to step nine, which is once you replace the, the cyclo converter, which is this part. When you look this part up, sometimes they call it a voltage regulator, but it's the inverter. And then they're going to want you to check the voltage, make sure it's got 120 volts, and then they want you to do some other load testing and stuff on it. But it's this. This is bad. How do you know? Because I've already tested everything, and now I'm showing our fans and viewers out there how I went through the test procedure to find out that this is bad. So when I went to look this up from Honda, no longer available. So if I wanted to fix this generator, I can't because I can't get the part to fix it. They don't make it anymore. You cannot service this part. This has got a lot of electronics that's in there that are encased in epoxy. So there's no way you're going to be able to bust that open to repair that, that inverter part. And there's no inverter from another brand of generator that's going to interface with this generator. The connectors are going to be different. It's going to work different. So you're not going to be able to get an inverter from another brand of generator to put on this one to make it work. So you're pretty much dead in the water. This thing is pretty much just for parts. It's junk. All right, so let's start it. So they were all within the specs. Plus or minus 12, that last one was 67. If you add 10 to that, that's 77. So that's within specs. So the next one is the orange and gray. So I have to get my other, uh, my other connector. Well, you got it running, so it's all fixed. I guess I'll take it back with me now. Yeah, if you want to just listen to a running engine that doesn't put out any electricity, if you plug something in there, it ain't going to operate it. Oh, okay. You oh. knucklehead. So I got these, which you can find online. It's got a little, little pin in there, a little stabber. I forget where I bought these. I've had them for many years. Just clip it on there, and then when you screw this in, it stabs the wire. Now these, I got to tweak these a little bit so it makes a better connection. Where's my dentist tool? Let me get that when you're done with it. I gotta clean some stuff out of my teeth. These little, these little connectors are cheap. I gotta bend them out a little bit. That's why a lot of times you'll see it fluctuate a lot on there. The reading, because it's not getting a good connection. All right. Choke it. So we're within 
the specs. And that's 12 volts plus or minus 2 volts. So they give you a little leeway there. All right, now I've reattached all the wires back to the inverter. And the only wire I haven't connected up yet is the orange and gray wire. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in the low oil shutdown. Oh, that sounds like my car alarm out there. Well, you better go shut it off. Hey, I don't have a car. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to turn it on and we're going to start it. So as soon as I plugged that in, it killed it. Now, in the manual, we saw that this was within spec. And when I go to the wiring diagram on this generator, here's the inverter, here's the orange and gray wire, which comes from the subwinding inside the generator. So when we pulled that off and we tested it, it was putting out 12 volts. So we know that's good. So it's the inverter that's bad. And of course, they don't show you any of the electronics inside the inverter. They just show you the connections going to it. So this part is bad, this inverter. If we had a new inverter, this generator would work. The problem is they don't make the inverter anymore. And the prices I seen on this inverter were anywhere from $350 to $550 for the inverter. Ugh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. So can't fix it if you can't get the part. And I don't have a used one. So this generator is pretty much junk. Ugh. Now another thing I want to show you that's high priced. This was my best generator. It said on here that uh, it had a bad GFCI relay. So what they meant by that is there's supposed to be a test button on here, a little plastic button, so you can test the GFCI. And the little button is gone, but it still works. You could, would still be able to test it by pushing it in. Okay, so you, you take this thing apart. Say your button busted off and you wanted to get that new part. So you go inside here, and here is this GFCI component in here. See this little component right here? I looked this component up. You know how much this little piece costs right here? $650. Oh. That's a lot of money. That Honda is out of their mind. Yeah. So that's why I say these Honda generators are junk. Now I got more stories to tell you about these Honda generators well, and their can crazy. Can I get a bottle of water? You already drank one? Yeah, I need another one. Well, refill that one. Oh, okay. And you know what? Use the water out of the toilet. It's a lot colder. Oh, oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for the advice. Yeah. So some of you fans out there that watch this channel for a while, you've probably seen we did another uh, generator, inverter generator video where the inverter was bad. But for those of you that, that hadn't seen that one, this is the old inverter from that generator. And that customer had us fix it. You know how much this part was? $1,100 for this part. Now that was a few years ago. I don't even know if this part is even still available. May go to look it up and it might not be available anymore because that seems to be the way it's going. And then I got another story to tell you. 
our local volunteer fire department had a Honda 12K three-cylinder diesel generator they brought in and they were having pro problems with it. So I got out this manual and went through the test procedures and found out the inverter was bad on that. You should have seen this generator. It looked like it was brand new and they used it for emergency power. So I said, I found out what's wrong with it. The inverter's bad. This is how much the inverter costs and it's no longer available. Can you believe that? Perfectly good diesel generator and it needed that part which you couldn't get. So I told them that and they said, well, we're gonna call the place, the Honda dealer we got it from and we're gonna see if they have the part. Maybe they got a new old stock part. So they call the Honda dealer and they go, oh yeah, we can get that part, that's not a problem. Yeah, we can get that, yeah, no, that, part, that part's still available. Two days later, they call them. Uh, no, that part's no longer available, which I already knew. So I said, well, what are you gonna do? You can't fix it, it's, it's junk. It's pretty much junk, unless you got that part. So they go, well, we found one online. I said, oh, okay, great. I've experienced this too. A lot of online sellers of small engine parts, they don't know what parts are, are available and not available. There's not like they get a notification like, better pull this part off your website because we don't make it anymore. So I said, you might want to call them and make sure they got the part. So they called them and said, yeah, we want to buy this part. We see it's on your website. Do you have it? And they go, hold on, let us check. And then they went in and they go, no, that part's no longer available. So here they had this very nice, expensive generator, and it's junk. What are you doing? Oh, what's this thing do? It's a sander. Now put it down. Oh. You're supposed to be paying attention to this. I was, I was. So it's done? Yeah, it's done. It's all fixed. Take it away. Oh, okay. So that's why I say these Honda generators are junk. Now recently, I've become a service center for these Champion brand generators. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. And I've had a few of them come in and it was for the typical problems where people left gas in them and the carburetors were all gummed up. And I called and they had the parts. And the parts were fairly inexpensive and they came fairly quickly. And they've got all kinds of nice generators that have all kinds of high-tech features on it. They got inverter generators, they've got um, real quiet generators, those suitcase generators, they've got all that stuff. They've even got a generator that's got a, a CO sensor on it. So if you try to run it in like an enclosed building, It'll, it'll shut the generator off and set off an alarm to let you know that, hey, it's stupid, you're not supposed to be running this generator in your garage or in your basement or in your house. So if you're interested in getting a good generator that's decently priced and you can get the parts for it, you might want to check out Champion Generators. They got them with a key fob, you can remotely start them. So I was curious since I'm a service center for that product, and I called them, and I gave them the part numbers of some different inverter generators that they sell to find out how much their inverter was. So they didn't make a 3,000 watt one, they made a 2,500 watt, so it's pretty close to this one. So I called them up, I gave them the part number, and I said, how much is that inverter? And they go, okay. Yep, we have it in stock. And with shipping and everything, would have been less than $200 for their inverter. Now, I haven't had any of their generators come in for the electrical end of it. It was, again, just mainly the, the common things we see on most generators, and that's people leaving gas in them and gumming up the gas tanks and the carburetors. And then just like little things, um, the battery strap to hold the battery on for the electric start ones that, you know, would get dry rotted and rot away. But every time I've had to order parts for them, they've had them. So yeah, 
not too fond of this Honda stuff. I know a lot of y'all like Honda stuff, but owning the shop and working on this stuff all the time and seeing all these generators having these issues with the with the putting out power part of it and looking up the parts and finding out the parts are crazy expensive or they don't even make it anymore. In my book, garbage. This thing is for parts. That's all it's gonna be for. Oh, that's too bad. Sorry to burst your little bubble there, buddy. Oh well, it's not mine anyway, so whatever. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Tarot Fixes All. Check out our web store. We got all kinds of merchandise and stuff on there. Maybe there's something you might want to see on there. Go to our other channel that we started. Terrell fixes all skits. It's all the skits, all the comedy skits. It cuts out all the technical stuff. If you like the comedy. Follow me with your junk Honda equipment on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, there's your dinner. I'm not going to give an exciting woo because this is a sad woo. Woo, Honda generators, junk, woo. What do you say, Andy? Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm sad.